Imagine a future where things which we consider sci-fi now are reality like AI which far exceeds human intelligence, a true AGI which could eventually think and observe the world and itself independently and use the knowledge acquired to self-improve, or brain chips and software to help us remotely control any technological device, or maybe advanced intelligent nanotechnology which will allow us to control matter at molecular and atomic levels. It will help us develop highly optimized and efficient for us miniature devices and technologies to further enhance our lives. Why not fully immersion virtual reality where gigantic new worlds are getting engineered and constructed out of scratch, where we could experience everything we could ever desire. And we would definitely be witnesses to humans who live extremely long lives where biological aging is no more an issue and all deadly age-related diseases are eliminated. Well, all these might actually become reality in a not so distant future. Ray Kurzweil, a director of engineering at Google and a well-known futurist with a very high accuracy for predicting future events, says that 2029 will be the year where AI will finally pass a valid Turing test, which will mark real level human intelligence in machines, and around 2045 will be the time where the so called technological singularity will happen. Now, before diving deeper into this, let's take a step aside really quickly to pinpoint a few historical facts. In short, computers have been part of our lives for about the past 80-90 years. In simple terms, initially the idea of the computer was a machine that could do various mathematical equations automatically without the need of manual human labor. Since then, the calculating machines have become widely utilized, especially with the coming of the internet. They have also become smarter and smarter in their computational abilities. The computational power of any machine is determined by three main factors. The transistor count, the instructions per second, and the flops, meaning the operations per second. In the past few decades, the increase in computational power has been following a particular trend called the Moore's Law. The Moore's Law did not start as a law in the beginning. It was simply an empirical observation made by Gordon Moore, a co-founder of Intel and later on CEO of the company. Here's the original graph he drew in 1965. He observed a trend in the growth of components per microchip, which he said would double about every two years. Initially, he did not even expect this trend to hold true for more than a decade, but microchips have kept doubling in power every couple of years until present days, only slightly slowing down in the number of transistors after 2010. For example, the first computers had only a few thousand transistors, they could execute a few hundred instructions per second and could perform just a few flops, but modern high-end computers have tens of billions of Transistors. They can execute trillions of instructions per second and can achieve quintillions of flops. That's one with 18 zeros behind. The increase in computational power of modern machines has sped up and is now doubling about every six months. This means every six months the most upgraded neural networks can perform as much as double the operations per second. These advancements happened in all digital electronics. The Moore's law is present also in the reduction of microprocessor prices, which has halved approximately every 1.5 years during the past 60 years. Years, the increase in memory capacity, the improvement of sensors, and even things such as the number and size of pixels in digital cameras. These ongoing changes in digital electronics are closely related to wide technological and social change, increase in productivity, and economic growth in the past 50-60 years. However, it's worth noting that as we approach physical limits and face challenges in the semiconductor manufacturing, sustaining this rate of growth may become increasingly challenging. But if this trend keeps on going, are machines going to become smarter than us sooner rather than later? Later, and what happens when they start to exhibit far superior characteristics than humans? The term technological singularity was popularized by Werner Vinge in 1983. It was borrowed from cosmology essentially with the same meaning as the singularity in the center of a black hole, where everything gets sucked into and we can't really know what is going on in there. The technological singularity itself is going to be this hypothetical future point in time where progress is so rapid, referred also to as the intelligence explosion, that technological growth will become uncontrollable and unpredictable, and therefore we will not be able to know what will come after. It could lead to a utopian post-carcity world in which disease has been eliminated and human beings have everything they want and need, or it could lead to enormous catastrophic global suffering and possibly mark the end of humanity. The intelligence explosion and essentially the singularity itself is going to be the culmination of the acceleration of technological progress. An intelligence that is at least as smart as a human being will not have the bottleneck of our biology and will be able to make a smarter version of itself in a shorter time than it took for it to be created, which then is able to make one even smarter than the first in an even shorter amount of time, and so on, reaching such rapid speeds that it becomes impossible to follow and predict. 
The whole process of the accelerating change has been discussed by many scientists for the past few decades. First, it was mentioned by the Hungarian-American mathematician John von Neumann. He and others after him, including contemporary scientists and futurists, have taken into account various trends in scientific discoveries, natural evolution, improvements of technology and various changes in society in the past and, through extrapolation, have come to the conclusion that there is a certain law of accelerating changes that takes place in all these fields. For example, economy from the the Neolithic era until the Neolithic era doubled every 250,000 years. The agricultural economy, however, doubled on average every 900 years. And in our current era, beginning with the first industrial revolution, the world's economic production doubles every 15 years. Same goes for many other aspects of society and nature. Now, let's put things into some perspective. Since the beginning of evolution, more complex life forms have been evolving exponentially faster, with shorter and shorter intervals between the emergence of radically new life forms, such as human beings. By extension, the rate of technical progress amongst humans has also been exponentially increasing. As we discover more effective ways to do things, we also discover more effective ways to learn, such as numbers, written language, philosophy, science, instruments of observation, computers, AI. Each of these major advances occurs increasingly close to the previous. Already within the past 60 years, life in the industrialized world has changed almost beyond recognition. As a result, this pattern will culminate in an unimaginable technological progress in the 21st century. The most powerful computers nowadays execute more operations per second than the human brain. Therefore, in a way, they could be considered more powerful or smarter than us in a variety of areas, where precision calculation is needed, such as research, analytics, forecasting, optimization, game in the nature of language processing. But machines hit some roadblocks in other areas, like energy use and creativity. On one side, the difficulty comes from the fact that the brain thinks in an analog way using biological molecules, while the computer is made of non-biological materials and things using electrical power. The most powerful computers, which rival the brain in operations per second, use roughly a million times more energy. In that sense, the brain is structured in a way to be extremely energy efficient. There is currently a fierce competition between some countries like the USA, the European Union, China, Taiwan and Japan to build even faster and more powerful supercomputers, which will require even more energy and hardware because the computational power of modern deep learning networks arises from their large size and interconnectivity. The hardware bottleneck, however, prompts companies to now try to find innovative ways to build computers inspired by the structure of the human brain. Such are the so-called neuromorphic computer chips. They are built with deeply connected artificial neurons and synapses essentially mimicking the human brain. In contrast to conventional computers, the human brain is extremely flexible and can adapt to unpredictable environments. Neuromorphic chips try to recreate that by using stored data to develop their own problem-solving skills and can then tackle problems for which they were not specifically programmed. They are also much more energy efficient and compact compared to conventional computers. An even further reduction in size and costs can be brought by the progress in areas like quantum computing and nanotechnology, with which we will be able to see spikes in computational power and thinking as we become witnesses to the first AGI type of computer networks, hopefully very soon. Something more is that neural networks and machine learning algorithms might just need some more time and information to learn what we humans learn for years and years until they, like us, develop highly complex understanding of wider range of skills like how to interact with the world around them, ethical and moral beliefs, self-consciousness and consciousness about their surroundings, creativity and tendency for progress and change. A more pessimistic view about this whole process and the singularity is the Terminator scenario, where this sentient AI will turn on us. This belief that makes for interesting Hollywood movie plots means that computers will develop completely separated from us. But the more probable scenario, as agreed by many scientists in this field, is the scenario where we slowly and gradually merge with machines. What's gonna happen instead is that we're going to continue to augment our own thinking by offloading more and more and more of our own cognition, our cognitive apparatus, to non-biological intelligence. So it's not so much that that mind is gonna rise, that artificial mind is gonna rise up against us, but that we're going to continue to become more non-biological. In a sense, we have already partially offloaded our cognition on non-biological things, such as our phones, notepads and others, as the so-called extended mind thesis goes. 
at the end of the day, why does all this even matter to us? Well, even if singularity does not happen this century or ever, it's worth discussing. On one side, because of its theoretical significance, but also because if it were to happen as predicted, it would really influence life in a profound way. Highly intelligent machines could one day provide us with answers to deep philosophical questions about our place in the universe, help us improve our society's moral and ethical systems, provide cure for many deadly age-related diseases, and just give us a better overall understanding of everything. But the intelligence explosion might be the most important event in the history of the whole planet. Because, after all, I think the whole point with computers and AI deep down is that we are essentially creating a mirror image of ourselves. There is honestly so much more to be discussed, but I will draw the line of this video here. Let me know what you think. Thanks for watching and please subscribe.